Williams not going for the ball and getting something on it. Uh, Arsenal running onto us, breaking, ball in the middle and then obviously uh, smashed home. You can't give a player of that quality the space that he had. We knew it was going to be a goal straight away. Uh, we take positives though. We go into the, obviously the Norwich game coming up uh, with some, I think, some decent performances. Uh, a cameo from ASM uh, I thought was particularly good. Uh, Hayden was absolutely fantastic, I felt. Um, and there's, there's room for improvement with some of the others. Um, Almiron played his first game back and he's um, he obviously he, he snatched a few chances. It's not quite fallen for him at, at the minute. Uh, but I'm not too overly disheartened. That was a top six side we played. Last season, we won, what, 1 in 12 against the top six? So, uh, it's in keeping with that record. I don't think there's a need to panic. And I think there are other um, issues as well to pick out from today's game and wasn't on the pitch. Well, well, we've got plenty of time to talk about it on the Black and White show. Uh, Lee, I'll come to you. Yeah. Um, the starting lineup we played with a wing-back system against Arsenal. Uh, it was pretty much expected. We touched on it in our videos that you've made that the audience might have seen from the Preston game, and um, that the wing back system would be expected. Um, was there any surprise in there for you today? No, for the two, no. I think it was just a Matt Ritchie one. Um, if he's fifty players, I think Willems needs to prove himself before he can dislodge Matt Ritchie. The rest, Mankio didn't surprise me. I know. Um, digging out Owen, who was part of our group, who said Croft, but yeah, it was. I'm gonna dig out another member. I'm gonna dig out Johnny because last week uh, he says Aaron's should be left wing back in there. Uh, yeah, that's a strange one. He didn't even make the 25. How did that go? So, um, <laughs> and, uh, Johnny yeah, Larson, fail. I mean, when he said it on camera, I said Johnny out like so. Uh, Johnny out. Um, <laughs> didn't surprise me though. But Arsenal side did mind. Um, I did a lot of youngsters. Joe Willock, who I was actually really impressed with. Uh, Maitland Niles playing on the right hand side, and uh, despite that though, they had the bad Aubameyang up top, and as proved today, he he can be that little bit of quality in them tight games. And for me, Aubameyang second top goal scorer last season under Unai Emery, who's now on screen. Um, he's he's deadly in front of goal, and he got one chance today, and he took the both. Arsenal fans complaining about uh, signing players when they've got an How much did they pay for abundance Aubameyang? of riches. Uh, Rob, uh, I think, it was, it was I think, something like 60, 70 million. Yeah, it wasn't cheap. It was in that vicinity. I know Pepe is their was, record signing I mean, is Pe seventy-two. Pepe is seventy-two million. Aubameyang sixty million. See, we could only dream of stuff like, like that. Yeah, it's like is Conte really that bad? Is he spend he's spending money on decent players. Yeah, they're not like they're not doing what Man City are doing. They're not doing maybe what Wolves are doing. But they're they're the team spending the money in the league right now. Arsenal to bring them type of players in and then to moan on. About just to have the, that bench alone. You're talking Pepe alone and that's a £70 million, £70 million pound winger and then Lacazette who didn't even come off the bench. Just, mm. well, if you sold, if you sold him today, him, if you sold him today, that's probably 60 ish So they've yeah. got quality. David Luiz is, you know, World Cup. Hello, Bart. <laughs> yeah, Rob Pat <laughs> got that one in. But yeah, they've got quality riches on which we can only dream of. Fair enough. I mean... In terms of the way we set up, as I say, as a Preston, I wasn't I wasn't surprised at all with how we set up. One thing I was really impressed with, though, because I've seen Fordy saying in the um, in the chat tactics, what tactics, but one tactic I think we did really well was um, the free pressing midfielders. I thought to a, to a man, Hayden especially, the, uh, this formation suits Hayden fantastically. They really push on the Arsenal defence, and in the first half, they really struggled to cope with that. So, to be fair, I was, I was actually really impressed that Joe Linton... Almiron and uh, the three midfielders looked to push forward. I mean, when Arsenal got past the midfield and ran through with the likes of Joe Willock on a couple of occasions, they had um, they had a prob they caused a few problems or, or, or two when there was only one sitting midfielder. But other than that, I think I think we we'll handled Arsenal's midfield pretty well. I think the problem is with Shelby in that particular position. He's obviously he's fantastic with the help, you know the Hollywood balls forward and picking long passes out and and doing that the quarterback sort of role. But defensively. You see him too many times. He's running, 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 and then he loses his man. He doesn't put a, a tackle in. He doesn't yeah. track back. He hasn't got the pace. So that is a, a side that... I thought he struggled with it. He, he didn't have his best game, but he took a knock, didn't he, after about five, ten minutes, and then he never seemed to you know, come back. And then, obviously, he was he was hooked eventually, wasn't he? Uh, so whether he, he was carrying a knock or something, because it, it wasn't a typical John Joe uh, display, I felt, today. I don't but, think Longstar. Uh, I know one short to do well, but I think Hayden outbossed the two of them. And he 29. Mm -hmm. 
Aye, any 20 make sure you get that in there. Make sure you get that in. I'm get it in now, but yeah. I mean, any 29 lad myself, so any chance I get, <laughs> Mr. Longstaff's getting a mention. Both brothers are. But, uh, I mean, we've got a long show, we've got time to dissect everything. The first chance that comes to my mind was um, Almiron diving in the box. Now, um, Almiron, I love you lads, you're a very exciting player, but uh, you need to cut out the diving, especially with VAR coming in. Uh, it's, it, to be fair, I don't think the English game will tolerate it that much now with VAR coming in because you're not going to get away with it. If you get the penalty from it, they will turn it over and you'll probably get a respect ban for it at, as well. So At the end of the day as well, uh, Almiron is a fantastic talent and last season when he came in, uh, you were seeing constantly uh, opposition players putting two players on him yeah. and they were fouling him, they were kicking him, they were hitting him, they were trying to get rough and tough with him. He is going to naturally draw fouls. He's going to naturally win free kicks and penalties. Yes. You don't have to add the um, the sort of theatrics and all that. He on, on top. You don't need to. He's, he's, he's got skills in abundance. He just needs to keep working hard, keep grafting away. And I honestly think it will come good. Um, and it may you, even, if you ever do it against Norwich. I'll tell you what, obviously, Andy. we've just been chatting with the Arsenal fan TV lot, and Kelechi actually thought that was a penalty because you can't see it with the replay because it happens to just be that fair, quick. Though, in his defence, he, he's got a view from the moon. So, like, are you seeing how high level seven is? It's like, yeah. A, once, anyone who's I reckon it's one small step for man. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, or you could, or you could uh, say the title of my book, One Small Step for Manor. Oh, available to buy on Amazon. How, how many puns will Rob fit in this show? Rob, I'll get your comments in, please. I've, I've got some lined up. I reckon eight. I said six last week and I was I mean, right what, with six. We're already so. on two and uh, I feel like I want to pull my hair out. I'm going to have hair like Paul by the end of the show. <laughs> I, I haven't said <laughs> two, I haven't said two puns one. yet. That's yeah. enough. That's me done. That, that's me done for the day. That's me done. But, uh, yeah, I think that it's shortly after the Almiron incident, which wasn't a penalty, let's be honest, but... The shortly after that, the Joel and Hedda, which is what we've mentioned in our uh, review videos, and of course we'll play our ratings video where the header went just astray. But uh, what did you think of Joel in the day? Because like, it's debut number nine, yeah. uh, a lot of money spent, I think it's 38 million spent on him. Yeah, I, I was really impressed with him today. I thought it was very difficult conditions to play in, you know, all that swirling wind and very heavy rain. Yes. And <laughs> yeah, but that. Those conditions make it really difficult to, you know, get the ball under control, play some effective football. And I think Joe Linton did exactly that. He got the ball down, gave us possession, kept possession more, and even even regained possession from Arsenal on a couple of occasions where he broke up the back four. And um, you, you you'd think that for him, of course, the first goal is always going to be the hardest. But then when I said that to Paul earlier, I then realised, hang on, Hosselu scored in his home debut, didn't he? So. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think you can mention Jostelow and Joe Linton in the same sentence. Today, mm. I will say he didn't it's an score. an insult to Hosselu, isn't it? Yeah. But, <laughs> um, he did everything else but score. The work rate, which is the first thing you should get no matter what, the work rate was fantastic. These little touches, the ball comes to him and it seems to stick to his feet. You can see the quality that he's got absolutely in abundance. He will score goals. He's brave in the box. He drops deep. He gets the ball. Crafts. He'll, yeah, he'll run it. Yeah, he's got the tricks, the crafts, every, everything like that to be an absolute top, top player. Um, and I can't wait to see him up against Grant Hanley. Next well, you had it. You had it. Um, you had it. <laughs> it was the first of two joint opportunities in the first half that I can recall from memory, uh, where he picked up the ball on the edge of the box. He done two Arsenal defenders, and then he and he put straight at the goalkeeper. Mind if that had, if that had went in, that would have been. He's, he's got he's got a bit of everything, and because yeah. we've seen it in pre-season playing on the last man, we've seen it on uh, the Hibs one where he had a fantastic first touch, which kept beating his man. Today he had a mix of everything. He was bullish. It was physique. Mm. Uh, so he seems to have a little bit of something in his locker, and he probably just needs a slight tweaks. I mean, the future's bright the with future's him. Future's orange. Yeah, I know you want to get that win. And there's one for you, Paul. Um, but I think it's just wait until he gets bettered in. Um, is Almiron the answer? Maybe, but maybe not. Maybe drop him. But with Joe Linton, I mean, his touch is phenomenal. I mean, he's got a hell of a first touch, which beats his man and I goes mean, round. People are in the comment section, if you're, if you're uh, watching and listening through Newcastle fans TV, um, I, I said an Arsenal were a bit of a, a mid-table side today. I think it was a little bit, a little bit unfair, a lads. Little bit in, in you might be, you might be referring to um, the know, actual side that they put out. Yeah, well, I know mm. it was a bit of mixture, but at the end of the day, when you can bring off players off the bench of that quality, uh, you're not a mid-table. Uh, Especially side. when you've got, mm. you know, Obama Young. 
I mean, Pepe alone is probably worth more than the entirety of Sheffield United's team or even an Aston Villa, for, for example. I mean, I know they've spent Washing how much. Uh, sorry, Paul. Because <laughs> uh, Villa's in the Premier League this season. I know uh, you, you don't take too fondly the, the lads down in Birmingham. But um, in terms of... I'm going to go back on to Joel Linton. I was really impressed with his work rate. I'm trying to compare him to like, how Rafa set up Rondon last season and how we're going to get the best out of Joel Linton. Because one thing you could probably say about Steve Bruce is he's actually really good at getting the best out of the centre forward. Got Darren Ben scoring loads of goals. I tell you what, I tell you who the best and Paul will remember this is Christoph Dugarry. Mm. When oh, he yes, first yes, came yes. to um, yeah. when he first mm. came at Birmingham, he didn't care. He's like, nah, yeah. I'm a World Cup winner. He's like that arrogant French so and so. And oh, Bruce yes. worked on him and he actually kept them up. Dugarry just get the ball in and he could bring the ball down from the air, headers, crosses technique and he actually kept Birmingham well, up and he well, actually got the best talk, out of him. Yeah, talking about technique, what do you think about in the second half with Bruce and his technique? Oh, oh no, this was oh, first half. I was about to bring it up. Oh, um, here we go. Steve Bruce with the no-look flick. I was thinking, oh my God, give him a 10-year contract now with flicks like that. It was up, It was just absolutely outstanding. It was the best, be- best piece of skill on the day. I mean, you we all know Steve Bruce, he's like a bit of a meme in terms of like his size. You see that... Um, Memes going about of like with like out standing up like outside chippies and whatnot to do a flick like that in your fifties. Credit to him. I'm not looking. He didn't even look. It was I very mean, Ronaldinho. I, I don't even think he did that in his playing days at Man United. No, he wouldn't have because he, he he'd have absolutely got his head taken off by Ferguson if uh, he'd have done anything like uh, that. Roy, Roy Keane going through. I think yeah. Palestine would have looked and thought, "What are you doing?" Yeah, but uh, <laughs> it, it was a class flick. Like I was, it, it was one of the few. Highlights and what has been a has been a dreary dreary day in terms difficult of difficult day difficult day very difficult. But moving on to the second half, and I thought, well, we didn't make any changes first and foremost. But um, I thought we started pretty much the same. We contained Arsenal really well. But the first half, I'm sorry, the second half, the first chance really was that goal. And uh, I'll touch the. I'll go. I'll go on early. Then. Yeah. William uh, Williams comes on and uh, Dummett plays the ball out from the back and uh, he makes it. Uh, uh, Williams doesn't go to the ball and he gets caught out. And for me, you can't be doing that. I, I, I think that's the pace of the Premier League. I think that's a small difference. with the, Everyone compares the Bundesliga, like I do, is quite similar to end to end, but that split, if he has an extra two seconds, Arsenal don't score in the Bundesliga. Whereas the Premier League, you've got someone literally up your backside trying to nick the ball off you. And that's what happened. We'd have been so used to having a bit of an extra two or three seconds on the ball in the Bundesliga or the Eredivisie. The probably even slower. Yeah. And then, bang, so. nick the ball, the score down, split the defence. Obviously, the Arsenal fan TV crew was saying it was a great finish, which it was, to be fair. But that is a mistake, which led the goal in my eyes. And simple, small, small margins we could have nicked a point today. It, it, it was little margins because, personally, I thought... I know a couple of the Arsenal fan TV lot said that um, they felt they deserved the win, but uh, I disagree. probably think that they shaded it. I, mm. I, I really don't. I really don't. I thought, in terms of the way we played the day, I thought we deserved a point. And to be fair, with all the doom and gloom, uh, people uh, comment us and things like that Twitter saying, "Oh, we're, we're going to get relegated," and things like that. They were probably expecting us to get a good hammer in the day, like maybe what West Ham got. The other day, it gives you, it shows you good spirits. I know you'll probably touch on Norwich later, but it shows you that optimism that Bruce can pick little things like he was brilliant maximum when he came on, or didn't he had a fantastic game? Do I need to, how do I get the best out of Almiron? Yeah. Joe Linton was brilliant. He'll, he'll go into the Norwich game thinking, I've got a few positives to pick from you. I thought, actually, yeah. thought Mankio was pretty decent as well. He's already come out as well and <laughs> said that he started uh, you know, contract negotiations with the likes of Matt Ritchie, Dubravka, Hayden. Uh, and and go. so again, he's just trying to get the positivity going as much as possible. I think today was a difficult game because of the political situation as opposed to anything. It else. was always going to be a hard game for Bruce, regardless. Yeah, today. yeah. you know, in the yeah. first game, post Rafa, and everything. Um, so I think that there is a lot of positives to take out. We've got Norwich next. Some people in the comments are saying, "Yeah, Jack Lard, uh, yeah. Jack Cheater. I think the yeah. uh, boycott was in central midfield. That is that's a top. <laughs> yeah, we'll be coming on to that, I guess. <laughs> I mean, yeah. we'll be coming on to it later, but mate, that is a top comment. Yeah, but, um, sort of comparing it as well with like, like the Cardiff game last season for Norwich coming up. I've got no fear at all going to, Nor- to Norwich. Uh, based I on have so. driving. <laughs> oh, well, apart, apart from that, uh, but you know, on a football side, some of the stuff that we've got, the weapons that we've got. 
should be able to really hurt them. And that is the realistic first chance of three points of the season. Today was always going to be really, really difficult. I think we give it a decent, um, you know, fix of things. I don't really think they deserve three points. I don't think we deserve three points. I think a fair result would have been a draw. Yeah, but a fair result would have been, as I says the in, uh, in the short club where we were uh, watching the match because we took part in the boycott today, um, I says to you that I've lost my trailer to be honest with you. I thought um, I've lost my trailer for St. Maximum was brilliant yeah. when he came on. I was good. That, that, that's what I was going to touch upon when um, St. Maximum came on straight away, step over on the right hand side, whips the ball in, no one there, but honestly, St. Maximum comes on and he excites. And people compare him to Ben Orfa a lot, and I, I, personally, I don't see it. I, I, I think he's a bit more. He's a, more, he's a bit more <laughs> direct than Ben Arthur is. I think, I think he's the, the love child of Ben Arthur uh, and Le Mans Loire Loire because he's, yeah. got, he's got the, the <laughs> fantastic, he's got the, the, the tricks, the flair, the sort of like skills, if you like, of Ben Arthur, but then he'll trip over himself like Loire Loire did ben, or he'll score a spectacular goal like Loire Loire would. Ben Arthur would like stay out wide and then look to cut inside and things like that, but Maximin's always looking to... He's either, he's coming in deep for the ball. He's trying. He's he's got a lot more work ethic than Ben Arfa did, and uh, I I mean Maximum didn't they like, score assists today? But well, the first thing he did, Kyle, was he done more than what a couple of other players did on the day. He literally yeah. step over, beat his man. What a cross that is! Um, I was saying to Paul, that's a Shira, that's Shira. Like, like, get like, on the end of that. We're playing against, we'll be playing against the likes of Origin that next week, and obviously you're going to play the likes of Sheffield United. And Aston Villa and, and like your lower league teams like your Watford, your Brighton's, Bournemouth, Southampton's, like teams like that are going to be absolutely terrified of Saint Maximin. I, I think the the crucial thing is finding a system or a way of playing that incorporates uh, Joe Linton, Almiron, uh, and ASM as well. Uh, so that's going to be really really critical because you don't want one really being left on the bench because. They get a bit disillusioned and that side of it. I think these sort of type of flair players, you need to find a way to put them in the system so that they feel part of the machine. They can feel at the happiest then. Um, and that's going to make more chances, going to create more goals for Newcastle and obviously push us uh, up towards safety as soon as possible. That's that's right. And um, to be fair, lads, uh, that sums up part one of um, the... That black and white showing on part two will be running through every player individually and how well they did. So it's like a longer version of the player ratings. And uh, yeah, we'll see you in a couple of minutes. And uh, for those who are tuned into the radio, well, earlier me and Carl did a video post match and we said, oh, we're the haircut guys or something. And uh, I think we'll just play some uh, haircutting crew. Uh, I just died in your jokes tonight.
Kyle, what have we got coming up in part two of the show? Well, in uh, the second ever edition of the Black Mike Show on uh, Nova Radio Northeast 102.5 on all social media platforms on the stream. Hello, everyone. Um, I'm your host, Kyle Thompson, uh, joined by Lee Lola with the We Are Heart, Rob with the Dodgy Puns, and mm-hmm. Paul with uh, Well, I can't say much about Paul, can I? He's top lad. He's uh, put, Lee, uh, he's in striking distance. But, uh, he's got Lee, a, Paul. Uh, he, is stri- he is in striking distance. But uh, Paul, you want to plug something, so yeah. I'll give you the floor, lad. Just because I know somebody is listening uh, back at home, just wanted to give a shout out. Um, step my stepson, well, he's just come back off several weeks uh, away. With the cadets, he just got promoted to Lance Corporal. So Ooh. a big shout out, Lance Corporal well, Chanson, who is listening back at home. He's starting to pick the football up. He's been up here now a little bit, a little bit of time. So he's getting there. He's getting there with the football. But he's doing fantastic at the cadets. Can't, can't be a Sunderland fan if he knows what a promotion feels like. <laughs> can't be a yeah, Jack, did, o- can't be a Jack Hallback fan. Eh? He's absolutely fantastic <laughs> getting, the, uh, getting the promotion at the cadets. A lot of hard work and dedication. So a big shout out there. Well done, mate. To Morgan. Of course, well done. the promotion I'm getting on the shooting wise is Call of Duty. To be fair, and I still haven't prestiged on that. Oh, he, go, he would. He's, he would. He likes go, his gaming. Go, going a bit off topic there, but um, <laughs> I part two will be covering the rest of the Arsenal game and going through each player individually. Part three is the boycott or um, <clears throat> the lack of boycott. We had part, takeover, takeover. So we need to think of something like, similar like that. Yeah, something like that. Part four is uh, deadline day, and part five is uh, what we think is going to happen in the Newcastle season, and um, a little preview for the Norwich game coming up at the weekend as well. But uh, to finish off, to pick up where I left off, um, it was after the maximum chances in at last 10, 20 minutes. The game, the game just kind of fizzled out, didn't it? We didn't. Mm. Would uh, Steve Bruce didn't use all three of his substitutions, and there was a little feeling maybe we could have brought Muto on, but um, the problem I, I had with that is we already had Maximin, Almiron, Joel and in. Uh, I think Richie was pushed forward, correct us if I'm wrong. Uh, I thought we had quite a few attacking players on to have the roll of the dice. I think tactically he changed the formation, which is something that Rafa wouldn't have done because he would have stuck to his guns and stuck to there it. There was signs of a plan B there, which yeah, they, it's just a positive. <laughs> Rafa didn't really have a plan B. He's very set in his way, very stubborn on his plan, and very confident whatever he set out on the day would do the job. But I think Bruce did have a go, and I can only. I want to still like to say Muto, come on, get a defender off, get Muto on. Go for it. They're going to get beat 2 0, so what? Yeah, but the, the, the problem is, all they have, like, I know, but they have eight players in the box. If you lump the ball, he's not going to win the ball. And it's just an extra unless, body unless that's there. Unless he has, like, a if it falls to him, if it falls to him, and then it's bouncing around, you know, why not? I just I wanted to say it, but you know, it's his first game, Steve Bruce. I can't really. This is judge why the Carol, This is why the Carroll, though. Oh, situation. yeah, you're crying out for Carroll. That would have been perfect, yeah. wouldn't it? Yeah. Put him yeah. up. Lump it up to him and then look for the knockdowns for Yalmi. That'll come. And, you That'll know, come. And all that. Three times a year. Yep. That'll come. <laughs> <laughs> the game kind of just fizzled out. And uh, one thing I will call out though, Martin Atkinson, he only gave four minutes out of oh, time. Oh, goodness me. Leno, I think, had four minutes of had it, uh, four minutes of time on the ball ready to take goal kicks and that. He wasted time. Awful the day. And he didn't get anything of the yellow card or anything like that. I thought the referee was quite shocking today. And, he he'll be the first that I'm gonna go through. I think the amount of decisions he he the referees out just, are getting worse by the season. I mean they've got the help of VAR, and I think the only decision I think he really got right was the um, Almiron dive. To be honest, which is I mean he kept giving stupid decisions away. Arsenal all the time, very daft. Oh my god, I've just seen the score. Man United have won four uh, 0 against Chelsea, and uh, my two best mates are Man United supporters. So. Um, I'm staying on Facebook tonight, <laughs> but um, let's go start going through the Newcastle team, and uh, I'm going to start with Martin Dubravka, I think um, I think Dubravka played alright the day, I thought, didn't have, he didn't have a great deal to do, I thought, he's, I thought taking crosses and things like that, he was decent at, but the one part that could probably be critical, and you could probably put this down to the weather, was he said, he had a couple of kicks that were very wayward, and we've... Like uh, Dubravka set a very high standard. He just didn't look comfortable. Did you mean he, he was did. carrying a knock? Because like, he didn't look comfortable to me. From what I saw, like even when he was kicking, he, his his leg he wasn't putting it. He wasn't putting it through. Uh, it's not the first fish. time though. We've, you know, we've had issues with it. I mean, you've had it down the years with Pavel all the way up to you know Tim Krull. Uh, Shea Gibbon wasn't great at kicking. You know, Carl Dahl was not great. Today, I mean, like Carl Dahl, oh, that is one of the main reasons why I, I mean, I just don't rate him. But today, just going out, just out for a throw-in and just 
not even close to where it should be. And uh, it was really, really sh like shocking to see. I'm not not going to Bravka. I think he's a fantastic keeper. He's one of the best that we've had since Shea Given. Um, but, oh my word, that has to be improved. Well, he made a save in the first half from uh, Bamiyang, I think it was, if I recall. Uh, the ball goes over the top and he's run towards goal and he stands strong and ma and makes a save. Bar that, I don't think he made um, any... Any anything but pick the ball up then it would be fair, but just by his distribution. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to sound like I want to uh, show the player ratings or uh, rating the players or whatever we'll call it now. But um, scoring was, the players, scoring the players when I'll call it because we'll change it because uh, other channels like the have the same name as I was a, a lot of the time. But um, yeah, I'd say Tabrak played well without rating him too highly. Uh, he's one of the players, Carl, as well, that he's come out after the match and said, so this is how high Bruce uh, holds them do, he said that uh, we are in contract negotiations with him, he wants to tie him down. Yeah. So that, that's, re again, really, really good man management. Oh, of course not. Even after a defeat, what you're doing, you're putting your arms around him, and it goes back to something that Aaron said when he was on loan at uh, Chef Wednesday, and he said that was one of the things, he made him feel like a hundred times bigger. You know than what he was, and he's he's doing that again, even after a defeat, to try and find some sort of positive to take into Norwich. Oh, that's fair enough. We'll go on to the the right wing back next, which was um, Harry Mankiw, uh, Lee's best mate. So they are letting <laughs> you take the floor. With he's your actually best had a good pre-season. How did uh, you? I sound like Kyle now, Jack Holback. So remember, folks, remember it's Kyle out hashtag yeah. it. Uh, uh, no, in, in in general, I think he actually had the RVK. I don't think he got anyone got the better of him. And I think DeAndre Edlin, I know Croft's coming, but DeAndre Edlin has got a serious task of dislodging him. The only man now, you might say, is Emil Croft. Can he nudge Mankiw? If this was Norwich now, tomorrow, no, you'd go for Mankiw, wouldn't you? I think so, because he's more he's more attacking. I think uh, Kraft, or whatever he's, how you pronounce it, um, I think he's more he's more defensive. I think you would maybe play Kraft in the against the bigger teams if that makes sense, and then against the likes of your Norwiches, no disrespect, Sheffield United, Bournemouth, etc. You want a more attacking option. But like you say, Yedlin's got a, quite a job on to get back in the team. Well, he's, got, we've been he's got he's got Kraft. He's got Mankio. If Ma if if Kraft gets ahead of Yedlin, he's going to be knocked down a third peg. So he's he went could down he from, he's went down from first choice to third. In so Rob's thinking of a pun. He's going to go on then. With, oh, you know me too well. well. You know, you know with, with the signing of Kraft, you wonder how Mankiw and Yedlin felt about that. But if he give us some love in the comments, But if he if he drops, I'm see, But if he drops down to third choice, he could still actually even this European market could still open until the end of the month. But anyways, going back to the topic, sorry, I'm come off it. Uh, I think Mankiw was actually one of the better performers today. I don't think he's like, a, don't get me wrong, he's not a standout. He's not like an eight or a nine, but I'd probably give him a six or seven. Mate. You can't really actually, criticize him, can you? You I can't. Think, uh, yeah. I think Mankiw had a decent game today. I know, like, he's your best mate, and that, and you like to praise him more than everybody else on this channel. It trust me, it's not. But, 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 but he did play well today. I thought he had a couple of decent overlapping runs. To be fair for Mankiw, he looked, at least, he, at he least looked he, decent on the ball as well. At least he got on the rarity. start lineup like Jack Hoback didn't. I mean, Corbett didn't, didn't make the 25, and I'm glad <laughs> that he didn't make the 25. Uh, but moving on from... I'll tell, I'll tell you what, though, before, yeah. before we move on, I just want to make the point that after that joke, it's... Uh, I wonder if I had any of you in stitches, like craft stitches. Quickly moving oh. on. Um, <laughs> hashtag Rob out. I wonder, right, hashtag Rob out, get them in the comments, please, because uh, we need them. Hashtag <laughs> buns out. Right. Well, on to the first of the three centre backs. I'm going to start with um, Fabian Shaw. I thought Shaw, to be honest, was the worst of the three centre backs that played. I, uh, I thought defensively he was very solid, but usually with Shaw, he usually brings the ball out <laughs> and he, he, like, he has a long pass in him. He's good at bringing the midfield into play. He's good at getting the team forward in general, but. I just got the feeling that Dean just wasn't on it in terms of his passing. I don't know if that, a, a very mm -hmm. like Dubravka, uh, maybe down to the weather conditions because they were bad. But Shaw just passing out from the back, he passed it to more yellow shirts than out else. He's allowed to have the odd game off. Yeah, you know? he didn't really shower Arsenal today. He didn't really shower them for life. Anyways. Anyways, should I move on to the next uh, player? Which is all night as well. I thought Shaw played. I think this show's going to die. But uh, yeah, Lascelles, Jamal Lascelles, Captain Jamal Lascelles. How do you think he did today? I thought he did all right. Um, 
Again, defensively, we're not as if we were like overrun or anything. I do think that um, Dummett had a really decent game. Yeah. Um, Can I just quickly pause for one second? Yeah. Uh, Donald Oliver was commenting on YouTube. Uh, we did boycott. Um, you'll see that in later on on YouTube. No, you will do. But uh, on the cells, I thought the cells played really well. Bar the mistake that Jerry Williams made, which we'll get touch on it later, and we've already touched on as it happens. Um, I think the Cells played really well. He handled Aubameyang very well. Aubameyang very rarely got past him. But I was worried about losing him to Leicester, I must admit, at yeah, one point. Yeah, of course, with Harry Maguire going to Man United, that was, that was always mm. something yeah. that we were I think, worried about. I think anybody who Leicester go for, because even uh, Brendan Rodgers has said, the, the price will inflate. If someone if Leicester come in for Lascelles, they won't go 30 million, 40 million. They're not that. They've got that money there, haven't they? And yeah. then now that they want that set back and go, right, I'll take 60 million. And you always worry. Well, uh, Bournemouth did it with Nathan Appian, didn't they? They wanted 75 million for Nathan Appian, which is that's scandalous. Insane. It's Mental. unbelievable. How much did they get? It's it 20, it was 20 million, and I thought that was a bit of a rip-off as well. Uh, exactly. I think it was 24 million from Chelsea. Uh, mm. Correct me if I'm wrong. But uh, I think that's He was in that was. vicinity. Um, Dummett is the next centre-back. And um, yeah, I thought Dummett was the best of the three centre-backs a day. I thought... Nothing really got past him. Some excellent tackles, and honestly, from remember the championship days where Paul Dummett was the scapegoat. He's came. He's kind of came a local. He's got. Away, he's got he? thick skin, hasn't he? Yeah, he has. Yeah, and we know that how that feels. But um, at the end of the day, he was fantastic again. He's always Mister Dependable. Even if he has a bad game, he's always at least a six out of ten sort of player. Always, always, because he always puts the graft in. You can't really criticize him for that. Criticise him for various of his games if you want, but you can't criticise him for I that. Mean, today, enough, really good. Some of the last dish like tackles he was putting in and stuff. I mean, going forward, Paul Dummett's Paul Dummett. You're, you're not going to yeah. get like he's not. He just does what exactly he says on the tin. He's a fantastic defender. Ron I, I, I hope, no I, nonsense. I hope I'll be plays all season because uh, I think if we're going to stay up this season or push towards the uh, mid, up, upper reaches of mid table, then I think Paul Dummett. I'll, I'll give you one back. When uh, Lejeune comes in, sort of pun is it? No, I would no. I'm, we've already punned out. Um, <laughs> but when uh, Florian Lejeune comes back, who's been absolutely quality, let's face it. Uh, how how would you rejig that defence then? I really don't know. I mean, because it's it's. But know, this is what you want. Is is comp competition again. It is healthy competition, like. It's what you want. And you, you feel sorry for Kevin Clark at that point, don't you? Really, then. Yeah, he always does a good job for us. I think. He's, well, he's always been like Mr. Dependent on me, Kieran Clark, but like. Better goal scoring record then. Fede 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 Federico, yeah, Federico Fernandez, you can put in that mix as well. Oh, what Fernandez, do you do with him? I think they'll be itching for a chance when the, the Carabao Cup game comes up. But mm. on uh, uh, the left wing back, which was uh, Matt Ritchie, I thought his work ethic was there, as it always is. Um, the pace on the. Uh, on the right hand side from that Maitland, Maitland Niles, I think it was a part of the first half where Maitland Niles cuts inside and Richie kind of like um, slides off into the sunset. But it, ball, I think Richie had a, had a solid game. I think he handled the pace very well, and it's it's what we've come to expect from that Richie. To be honest, mm -hmm. um, very dependable, work ethics always there, and yeah, I'm, I was actually really happy with Richie today. I don't know what he was for mind. Again, he, he always gives you a, a good 6 out of 10, isn't it? He's like, yeah, we said before, it, isn't it? It, it's like you always get huff and puff, uh, but <laughs> will he blow the... That, uh, that, that will you know. not ever leave you, that will it? No, no, it, it, it does. It, it, fits him, it fits him nicely. He will huff and puff. How many doors will he blow down? Probably not as many as he used to. Uh, but he's a he's a quality player there. He's a player playing out of position, mm. but I think it's his professionalism. Um, and, you know, like... Leadership. I know he's not the captain, but he, he leads by you know an, an example to his, some of his other teammates. If you notice as well, any 50-50 decision, he's over there. He's in the referee's ear. So it's all of that, and you, you need that side of the game as yeah. well. Um, I really like him. I was surprised he was in the team because I didn't think because of obviously what happened up at uh, Hibs when we were up there. Uh, I didn't think he would make this one. I thought it would, be, it would be maybe Norwich, and I thought uh, you know, Williams would start today. So I was surprised. Would start, but uh, I'm happy Richie started because it, it just shows the character. The lad, if he's even if he's got a niggle, a, a niggle, a niggle, he'll play. So I'm, I'm actually really happy about that. But on to the first midfielder of the three, 
I'm going to go on to Isaac Hayden because we're going to touch Mate. on the Hayden a little bit mm. later on with the talks of the new contract and everything. But judging on the day, I thought Isaac Hayden, it was one of the best uh, games he had in the Newcastle shirt the day. He was absolutely phenomenal. Breaking up play, constantly on the... Uh, it, it, he ran that midfield the day and I know Shelby and Longstaff didn't have two great games, but... Isaac Hayden was absolutely brilliant. You reminded us of Czech Tio back in the 2012 season alongside Johan Kabai. It was, he, he broke up play, he got the tackles in. Remind me a bit he, of Rob Lee. He grafted, yeah. you know, he like, got the ball like, forward, he tried to make things happen. And uh, credit to him, if you stay, because in January I was spouting off, he, I hope that's the last game. He, I, I remember Blackburn in the FA Cup, uh, I says, with, he, with him wanting to leave, and things like that, and with his poor performance on the day, I says, I hope that's the very last time Isaac Hayden plays. And honestly, mate, um, I apologise because he, since then he's really showed what what he can do with these Newcastle fans. He, he's he's manned up, uh, absolutely immeasurably. Yeah, he, he, he's he reminds me of a, like a Rob Lee. Um, that he's he's a bit of everything. He can he can, he can do the defensive side, but he can get further forward. Yeah. Uh, again, it, it always like. Again, like a solid grafter. Since he's come back into the team, when you were talking about, he's always been a good. Again, above six out of ten. Uh, some that today, I thought he was. Can't be far off in England's call, can he? No, nah, he, he was, he was close it's... to be. The only trouble with that is Lee. He plays for Newcastle, and we all know what Gareth Southgate's like. But uh, yeah. getting back on. on uh, well, on South, Southgate's got three English midfielders there. You can't say that much in the Premier League. I bet. I bet there's none. Yeah, well, like he's wobbly. Yes, to me. Um, and and the way he can he can get the ball, I think he'd do it. He'd have done a great job if he'd have gone into the Shelby role today. Would have protected the back, uh, well the back five or the back three or whatever you want to say to, uh, about it. Um, but fantastic, I think probably man of the match today. I'd have given him an eight or a nine. Up there agree. with Joe. I thought Hayden was our man of the match today, if not the man of the match. I know I know Sky Sports give it to Bamiyan for the winning goal, but yeah, Sky Sports' has choices of uh, well, man of the, the matches. The, 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 com- the, the, com- the commentary today was very uh, Arsenal biased yeah. to say the least. But um, yeah, I thought Hayden was absolutely fantastic today, and I really hope, as we'll speak on about later, um, that he gets a new contract and really can settle back up here again. But on to the next midfielder that I played, uh, John Joe Shelby. Um, Shelby was a tough one for me because he's poor. He, That's just his facts. He def- was defensively, he was really he was solid. I thought he got a couple of tackles and things like that. But going forward, so yeah, he, I disagree there, Kyle. He, 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 fair enough. Would you have a debate? Please ah, open up. Yeah, well, I, I just thought today with John Joe, he needs to be able to put the, put your foot in, put yourself about a little bit. He's fantastic passer of the ball. But to me, he, 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 he just lets players go past him or he'll run back and then he just seems to sort of think, well, it's the defence's job to do now. You won't track your runners. And I think in that position, it's fantastic when we've got lots of the ball and he's pinging stuff left, right and centre. It's there to the case we'll see John Rochelle not, yeah. not that I think, I, think we're missing the, I think against the big teams, I think you should like maybe sweep them aside and not play them. Because it's mm. against these small teams where we need to break down That's and a, things like that. It's That's a where John Rochelle is going to be the... Is going to be like the kind of the person that's going to, we're going to look upon to get the ball into the box, maybe. He's and got to learn to put. I mean, I remember, was it Watford away? Correct us if I'm wrong, Rob Will. Uh, Watford away, when we conceded a goal, and wasn't he just like literally, literally walking back and he'd stopped? He'd stopped. Oh, yeah, the Corey Yeah, the Corey yeah. 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 Well, that one there, it just sums it up for me. I, I like John Joe Shelby, don't get me wrong, I like him. He's got a boss a game. I know he hasn't played much, but yeah. for him to get on that England side, he needs to be playing well against Liverpool, your Man City's, your Man United, Arsenal today. Not just your hips away. You're, I'm you're just like in that. this system, I just don't see him like. I think you've just got to you've got to give him the chance. It's one game because he'd have to work a hell of a lot harder than he is. Well, we you said, well, we, you said, we, said we said we said in in the pre Premier League. Uh, we said in <laughs> pre season that it looked actually good with him lying deep. But I think if Bruce is going to play it. Say what it takes after five or six games because we've obviously got Norwich, no disrespect, but you're expecting some to pick up something from there. Spurs is going to be difficult. Spurs is the big one, you need to perform that one. But see how it goes next five games, and I'm sure if, if results aren't picking up, I'm sure Bruce will bring in other players in. Uh, and the system. In, in January, that could be a well of position that we look at. If it isn't going fantastically, I think our 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 firepower is fantastic. Our defence of last season is brilliant. To me, the question marks is about the chemistry and how the middle of that park is going to gel. Sean Longstaff is an absolute no-brainer. He is in regardless. Yeah. Uh, Hayden forces his way in. So I think the one that's a little mm. bit under pressure is John Joe because, to me, yeah. 
if, if if I had, if it was a football manager game, I would be looking to bring in a good boss and central defensive midfielder who's not scared to put a tackle in uh, and who will just literally get the ball and then just pass it off and it will protect that defence. And I think that's the area. I think John Jaws is the, the one that's the sort of weakest and he should be worrying a little bit. Yeah, I think Shelby's performance today reminds me of the time when I got sacked at the Scissors Factory. I uh, I, I, just, I wasn't cut out for the job. I wasn't cut out for the job. We need a sound effect. Wow! Look at Kylie struggling. Onto the, onto the next player in midfield, which is uh, NA29. I mean, I can say it again. The league gets sick of us. Everyone's probably sick of us by now. Uh, NA29, Sean Longstaff, Nate Meese, uh, first competitive start from uh, from his injury. To be fair, I, I, I don't want to be too critical, but... NA40, I, Dan Barley is out. I don't think he I don't think he played too well today. I think I think trapping back, he covered, he, he foiled Shelby quite a bit. He, he really helped Shelby out, but he only got 60 minutes. See, I, I, day, I think he? personally today, if John Joe's on his game, that's going to help the likes of Shelby... Sorry, that's going to help the likes of... Uh, Sean sure. stuff, yeah. <laughs> um, so it, it it's a big one. That's why I keep saying that I think John Joe's position is under threat because Sean Longstaff, the side is going to be built around him. He's going to be in there all the time. Yeah. Uh, today, I, I thought it, it, it did pass him by a little bit. I don't think he did anything horrendously wrong, but nor did he no. do anything fantastic. It was a solid great. game. I thought uh, yeah. in the player ratings that we did on our channel, I give him the same rating. That shall be spoiler yeah. alert. Sorry, Dave. but. Uh, Onto the, onto Still the, tune in tonight. <laughs> onto, the fr onto the front, uh, well, one or two. I don't know if it's a one-one or a two up top. But uh, Almiron, now where uh, we've touched on this earlier with the dive, I, I just think he tries to he tries too hard. I think like he just tries to he tries to make things happen when usually if he just like relaxes, takes a couple of deep breaths, and, and then things will fall into place for him. I just think he's trying trying way too hard to get his first goal. I think after the dive. He, like, his game was really quiet and he had to go deep to get the ball and he, he, he was trying to make things he was a little bit livelier when uh, St Maximum came on which we'll touch on in a minute but um, look at the pre-season card as well I mean even the, the Preston penalty even the, the Preston penalty when you compare be. that in Newcastle shirt to what you saw in the Copa America it's like chalk and cheese I will say every time I see him uh, with the ball and that's like, you get excited you wonder what's going to happen but like what we've said before he needs to relax, get that first goal. I think it'll all come because uh, he's got he's got everything, but he just needs a little bit. When that first goal, when that I've first goal comes, about it. I've seen a couple of comments in tonight's uh, chat mind that uh, people are starting to question his end product a bit. Maybe, so, but I think once he scores his first, well, I think don't be surprised if he goes on one of four games scoring I, I, yeah, with I goals and assists. It, there is talent there, absolutely. Yeah, just cut the dive, not mate, and you'll be fine. Is he a striker though? The goal fall, uh, the, the goal will happen eventually. Creating but chances as well. I know, like he, his name may not be in most. tomorrow's newspaper. He might not get on the, you know, a big mention in terms of you know as many goal scorers would. But a player like him is essential in terms of the creativity well, look, in look actually last creating season. goals. Yeah, but last season when he came in, the upturn now form was unbelievable. But he was playing in a front three then. Uh, the left I, so I mean, does he need you know in the same way that Mutu needs them pl uh, players around him? Does he need them players around him um, to be able to get the best out of him? And I think at some point we are going to have to try and find a Joe Linton, Almiron, ASM uh, way of getting all them playing at once. Um, I think it'll take the pressure off him a little bit. He can relax, do his natural thing. Because like, in the last season, up to when he got injured, it was absolutely fantastic for us. So obviously, some uh, well, people have short it, memories. Put it this way, I say. think. We take Almir on our, our side. We're a weak side. Yeah. Oh, that's, it, that's, that's for sure. I mean, yes, you might have St. Maximum there, but after that, you mean, you've it's got... Oh you know what I mean? So, uh, and, so alert. and he's going to be on the bench in the well, next couple before, of weeks. Before we go to the two substitutions that came on, uh, the number nine making his competitive debut, Joel and, and um, I thought he played really well. I thought he, he cut out the defences really well. I'm going to go through Joel and quite quickly on my own because um, we've already touched on Joel and everyone's had yeah. their opinion. I thought he broke up the play really well. Uh, he had a couple of a couple of chances, nothing clear cut, but I thought I was really impressed, and I look forward to seeing him in the next couple of weeks. Uh, onto the two substitutions, same maximum. I'll go through this one as well. Uh, very direct. We'll look to make things happen. Very exciting. Can't wait to see him play. And Williams, I'll I'll quickly go for this one as well because I mentioned his mistake. Um, his mistake was terrible. It's cost a point today, but 
That being said, I think he recovered well from his goal. He got in behind Arsenal's defence quite a few times. A couple of bits of skills. Really he looks, strong. He looks really comfortable on the ball and things like that. Um, but yeah, that wraps up like the second part of the show where we've mentioned uh, the Arsenal game as well as going through all the Newcastle players and how well they've played on the day in part three. A lot of you have probably been waiting for this one. The boycott and how that went and our thoughts on it. Uh, but yeah, we'll see you in a few regarding that one. of uh, the Black and White Show on Nova Radio North East 102.5 live on all social media platforms as well as the Nova North East, the Radio North East Network. Um, it, we've, if you've just joined, we've been talking about the Arsenal game. Now we're going to touch on the boycott Arsenal movement, which happened today. Uh, in the next, in part four of the show, it'll be the deadline day, and then if we will have enough time, part five will be uh, how will Newcastle deal this season. But. Uh, on the boycott, and, uh, I've seen one or two comments uh, in our live chat that uh, were asking why we didn't uh, participate in the boycott the day. But I'm um, here to tell you, we did. We were the, we were in the Shark Club, and uh, check out our Twitter. Check out our Twitter. There'll be a vlog on it, and um, the whole shebang. Instagram. Um, all the videos on YouTube yeah, tonight. We'll prove that. Right. We'll prove that we were at the Shark Club, and honestly, lads, it killed us. But uh, um, before we. Go, sink into the debate that is the boycott i want to give a little bit of praise actually because like other newcastle fan channels don't usually praise each other they usually have a dig at each yeah. other um you've you've got the brunt end of it later as you know but um 
I'll praise Gallagher Shots. Gallagher Shots were in the shop club as well. I um, I actually spoke to the lad that runs the podcast there. Um, really kind lad and everything like that. So it was nice to speak to them for the first time. And uh, the Magpie Channel League were on the boat, if I'm not mistaken. I think so, yeah. So there's, there's praise to be had. All three of the major fan channels, I know, like, uh, 100% at NUFC, part a, part took in the... Did Rob? Um, in Did Rubenstein? Rubenstein, I'm not sure about, but the three major fan channels have um, all boycotted the game. And to be fair, looking at the attendance, which I've got on a bit of pay by us, but uh, this is including the season tickets, by the way, so it's not it's not the exact ones. Uh, it's 47,635. First of all, can I just jump in? That includes season ticket holders, but it's probably a couple of thousand less than that. To be fair, mate, I, I, I don't. I think it's... No, I, I, the, 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 I, I, they've I published, they publish season ticket holders and I then think, any add-ons. I, I honestly think if I honestly think it's not far off. You, I've seen the cameras on Sky, they showed like, a little bit of an empty part of the ground. But that is nowhere near. Yeah, literally about, about 30 or 40 seats. It is literally 30 or 40 Le- Liam on, on the chat has just said, and I sort of agree, the boycott was more of an embarrassment than something losing at Wembley against Charlton. But and it, it was, it was just an absolute I'm, I'm joke. Want, I'm wanting to go from the start, because the march started on uh, Northumberland Street, outside of uh, Sports Direct, and then the march started towards uh, the Strawberry, but it's in James Park, opposite the um, club shop. But at the at Sports Direct, there was a, not uh, an okay turnout of around four, uh, 300, 400 people. The march towards the ground and that went down to 300 and then it got less and less. And the people that boycotted, we were we were among that as well as other fan channels, but <sighs> there wasn't many others. And this is something that really disappoints me because all summer you, you've had on social media, oh, boycott Arsenal, you are this, you are that. Uh, with us as a fan channel, and I'm sure the other lads, uh, the other channels have felt this as well, They've had stick from various social media people where they're like, oh, you are, you are a part of the problem, and many, many swear words and things like that to like point, point at us because we're, ta- we're easy targets because we're on YouTube and things like that. But I just think it's an absolute just, uh, disgrace, if I'm honest. I mean, you, it's talked about all summer. Boycott Arsenal, boycott Arsenal, boycott Arsenal. We're saying five players, boycott Arsenal. Ashley stayed in the fake over boycott Arsenal. Rafa's gone boycott Arsenal, and it's forty-seven thousand. And well, remember, that's that's what the club want to tell you. I know it'll probably be a bit less, a couple of thousand. A couple of thousand. They're saying it's the smallest home league gate since April two thousand and sixteen. It should be the. the but it should have been. If it should have been empty, it should have been the the, It should have been the smallest league gate since Tottenham at home. Question for you: is If it was red hot, do you think more go in or more would wait outside? I mean, what I want to do... I think more protests outside, because the, re- the weather of the day was horrendous. And the weather shouldn't matter, though. But it will. Know, yeah. But if you're walking past and it's, it's I'll, like, I'll like teeming agree. down, it's teeming down, and, and I said this to you, and I've said it as well, uh, whatever you think of the boycott, whether you're for it or against it, I said to you before, those lads and lasses that stood there in the rain yeah, for an hour, and, I'm, and, and I tell you, it wasn't just normal rain, it's like spitting it down, to stand there and hold up the balance, and for something that they believe in for an hour... You've got to commend that, whether yeah, you think it's right or wrong. It, of course, they deserve, they deserve all the plaudits they get because, it, it, to be fair though, going, jumping on the negative with it, it's not the first time where something's failed like this because I've been to every Magpie Group meeting, I've been to, I've, I've attended all that have, has been in the place to fight this regime as a fan and the Magpie Group meetings, you're lucky if there's 300 people there. The uh, protest right after Rafa Benitez was, uh, was left the club uh, at six o'clock, there was you were lucky if there was two hundred people there. It's like people will go on social media and they'll spout the gums saying, "Oh, we're going to boycott, we're going to boycott." And then when it actually comes to it, it's like as yeah. Paul, as Paul says, it's all fur coat and no knickers. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So it's, it's 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 not a barometer. The thing is, social media is not a barometer for the uh, full opinion of the fan base. You look at some of the figures that were chucked around by some of the by some of the groups saying that you know eighty odd percent are in uh, favour of. Um, you know, boycotting and all this sort of thing. If you wanted to give Mike actually ammunition to to laugh at the Newcastle supporters, today's events would probably be it. Uh, at the end of the day, to to get, I mean, people are joking in the comments saying that uh, forty seven thousand people boycotting, boycotting. It's you know, I've had messages from all over the country, just people 
Video what is boycotting though? What is boycott? Because boycotting is today is an and I'm not picking on fans who can't get the game, but today is your chance to be part of an event. It's not just staying could away have from game. Started off, it's it? it's where you come into city centre, you go to that bar, you you back it, you get in that demonstration, and I can see Kyle's uh, response to that like you're disappointed. I am disappointed as well because people keep saying and the hammer us because obviously we've got a, quite a large following. Um, why are you boycotting? Why are you not boycotting? Why are you going to games? Why are you not going to games? Why are you buying shirts? Why are you not buying? It's like you're it's, damned it's, if you do, you're damned if you don't. It's constant, you know, and it's. I think you've got to push a little bit further than just I said that you was off camera before and uh, the video that's coming up at night which is quite raw and passionate is there's more than life than Twitter it, you need to expand that more Twitter who, who uses Twitter except from us obviously because we relate our news out but all my mates not one of them uses Twitter none of my family do I'm the only one it needs to be bigger than that mates. So that's, yeah. that's great in news in itself. Lee has friends outside of Newcastle Farms TV. That's a, that's that's. I mean, they will wait for a live break of news. That's what Will and uh, Johnny wanted. But keep your Lance, hair on, watching. Uh, Lee's I'm got friends. <laughs> yeah, I've got I've got a child. I've got a girlfriend. I've got friends as well. You so know, we'll outside learn, of, outside we'll of this neck of the woods. We'll, we'll learn we'll learn a lot about Mr. Law of the night. You already uh, know a lot about me. I, I know a lot about you. But uh, that's, that's for another that's for another uh, rendition of the Black and White Show. Back onto the podcast. A late night edition the podcast. Right boycott, sorry. <laughs> um, the boycott, I think, for me, the threat of the boycott was a success. The actual boycott was an abject failure. Yeah. Like, I think the threat of it has really, like, made the board realise, all oh, right, there's a chance that we're going to have an empty stadium come Arsenal. And they've invested in the likes of Joel and, and, and uh, Alan St. Maximin. And uh, getting Andy Carroll home and bringing Jerry Williams in and Pratt, of course, to five people in, which from Steve Bruce coming in, which I think was 24 days ago now, um, it's quite impressive to be fair. Concerning our Newcastle, um, don't bring players in at all, usually, it usually takes Yeah, considering we've, Charlie, considering we've got Lee Charlie, considering we've got Lee Charlie in charge, it's a miracle. So that, that alone, for, for bringing those players and I just back onto the boycott, though, it's just. Just no, but you make a good point, sorry, Kyle, to put in, because a lot of people are saying, why are you boycotting this? You, you've already got your money. People aren't realising, some people, not everybody, but some people are realising it's not a money thing for some people. Um, for me and Paul, you said it already, for us two in particular, it's about a control thing, that if this can happen, we can all unite together as a fans. This was planned, and again, it needs the to be... The money means so little. To, 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 it's such a small percentage. Well, season it's, tickets is one-eighth yeah, is one eighth of the club. One-eighth, but... Is that control? For me, it was about control showing, because that took a lot of guts for me the day, and walk away for something where I absolutely... It's part of my life, six hours per day, every yeah. day, without, without... You know, I work around work, I work around... I've obviously just had a joke about the girlfriend, the kids, and all that. I work around that, in between 10 minutes there, half an hour there, but what I'm trying to get at is... It was about control for me walking away. That's something I love, and that was really, really difficult for me. And I'm actually proud of that. Proud that I done it. I mean, looking back on it, I'm proud of it too. But I've, uh, like we spoke at length in uh, the various chats that we will have on uh, on Facebook and Messenger and things like that. I wanted to go to this game. I yeah. really did. It proper killed us not to go to this game. So what did I say? Um, yeah. I spoke with my mum. I spoke with my dad. And like, I, 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 like, I, I felt so under pressure because um, I, I, I was uh, like because I discussed with Lee I was going to go and Lee was like well you need to explain to these people what like explain to the yeah. following why you're going to this game and for me it's just like having to what, explain like, yourself why should I have to explain myself when 50,000 is at that game sorry 47,000 it's like when do you know when me Paul and Rob had to do that video I felt like I can't say it when I really feel on radio but I felt like why should I have to go on a video to justify myself to go and support something that I've done for 25, 26 years of my life since being like a young kid. Exactly. Yeah. And then so you why, get the keyboard warriors coming on. So why should I have to? Exactly. I had to do that for 15 minutes and I hated doing that video and that was Rob. It was in the studio room that we'd done it. Mm. And I felt that I had to justify people from, from, from America, from Newcastle, wherever you are in the world, I had to justify why I go to games and why we run a YouTube channel and part of that links it in with it. Um, I felt actually sick. To be honest like, with you. you, you've touched upon it. The uh, Johnny, who's on our um, who's on our channel, he's going to have to do a video explaining why he's got uh, why he went today. And for me, I think it'd just be a complete not a waste of time because the boycott didn't happen today. It really didn't. There was a couple of hundred, couple of thousand. I've seen a comment saying uh, when on the uh, Kevin went on to the boycott boat, it was quite full, but that doesn't really 
It doesn't you only see in the, what the cameras want that, to show that, you. It's not all the. That's the positive, I suppose, where the where people that did boycott the stuck to the guns and everyone that boycotted have the full respect. Everyone that went into the game have full respect. I'm not going to attack you for your opinion because I'd expect not to get attacked for mine. But at the end of the day, we've, we've just got to look look at it, dissect it and say, it's a failure, lads. I would strongly recommend watching our video tonight. That uh, goes I, out I, late I tonight. Say, I would say watch our video as well because it's a it's a very passionate opinion on, on the boycotts and us who have boycotted and various other people have boycotted as well, we feel a bit let down because I, I really want to go to this game, but I've stuck to my guns and I'm like, you know what, I believe that a message needs to be sent, but I feel like I've wasted my time boycotting the game because an attendance of 47,635 indicates to me there isn't really a boycott. It'd be it's interesting to see seriously. as well what, where everybody else now stands because obviously the, we've, we've touched upon there is a quite a large amount of you know, different uh, fan channels around, etc. Some have said that they're going to be just boycotting this game. Some have said they're going to boycott the season. Uh, but really, based upon that, uh, will that force people to, you know, but then again, be interested? What's then... going to come out officially? You know, you, you talk about the supporters' trust and stuff. What are they going to say next? Because I think they've lost a lot of credibility today. I think today was a big point to either it was like push people one way. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like, what is boycotting again? Because... Like, for example, an international fan can't boycott. So their terms of boycott may be, I'm not buying a shirt this year. I'm not buying an online TV subscription, even though that'll kill me. Someone else's boycott may be, I'm not going to the stadium, whatever. Someone else's boycott could be, I'm not buying any merch, any programming. That might be their terms of boycotting. There's so many elements to boycott that it's not just games. There's several key factors in that. And I think today was more about the people who go to the games to show... Let's pull you out. That was the people who go to games today. That was their chance to show that they can boycott. And unfortunately, small numbers did. Well, I, I want to touch on why it failed like this this movement. I think I think hashtag boycott Arsenal was, was a Twitter movement. It was a damn good Twitter movement because I think it's changed the it's made small changes within the club, but it hasn't made it hasn't obviously made the the defining one that we want, which is actually out the club. For me, I think I think the things in place what it was already set up for it to fail before it starts because I think for me you've got to rally behind one flag instead of flipping nine or ten. Nine, ten, twelve hundred different And it's groups. not just that Kyle, you've got that on Twitter alone, right? And then you've got say us on YouTube who might say it's your decision, you do what you want. And then you might have another YouTube channel saying, Nope, we're not going. And you might have another one saying you go. So it's also dependent on who you follow as well. Yeah. So it should be just one and that's it. And I've said this on the video, so watch it tonight. It should be someone like a Michael Chopra who's come out and spoken against it. If he would be brave enough to lead that front, he would be the figurehead because he'll have contacts as well. It needs... I would if, say so, if, like somebody a bit more... Like him in, and somebody like, say, Shearer or a Keegan or somebody who can, can sp uh, spear... I don't it. think you need someone as big as that. I just need someone who's played for the club, understands it and has that little bit of a profile and push that to the next step because... If it's 47,000, is that going to convince, say, you to boycott in five games' time? It's not, no. is it? You no. need something to then say, right, okay, he's leading this front now. It's, I'll give it example. Take something big now. Let's just say it's Personally. Michael Chopra. Again, let's say it's Michael yeah. Chopra. He's leading the front for a game in October, late October. It's live on BT, whatever, right? Or Sky, whatever. And he fronts it. That'll go. I'll look at that and think, okay, that's, that's something. What else is there? What else? Get off Twitter. One group. Never mind having ten, nine or ten groups saying do this, do that. It needs to be one and, and like a, a kind of like a celebrity you push that. I know it's difficult, of course. These it's these all ifs. Will that and will that like all over the region? It's will not just that Newcastle? celebrity? Will that celebrity do it? That's the thing. Because that's a huge ask. It's a huge commitment to do it on. on behalf of mm -hmm. X, Y, and thousands. It's a massive, massive. I mean, I think it's quite, a, the, I quite groups have mentioned uh, in the meetings that I've went to that the that they've approached Kevin Keegan and Ke uh, Keegan's not like willing to take it on. So it's like it's, it's because he's it's, done his time with it's, Ashley. It's, it's a massive commitment to take on, and it's going to take someone with like the time and the willing to. to it's, like a, it's like a war. It, it is like a war, like planning a war. Um, and to me, though, now for I wonder for, the who's people, who, for the people <laughs> who haven't gone in today, who are now feeling a little bit miffed, shall we say, to be kind on the radio. But the situation, you try getting them to now boycott the next match, and it might not be as easy next Good time. Luck. So you might even have less people boycotting next time. It's going to fizzle out, 
And, and really, all of this was to get at Ashley, but Ashley's just sitting back and laughing. Well, Rob, what do you think? Because he's a bit quiet. Yeah, I'm falling asleep here. Let's wake him up. How I get yeah. the sheep? <laughs> We're away. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm just sleep deprived and I've done a 10k run today. Con congratulations if there's any of you watching who did the Darlington yeah. 10k run today. Kudos. Yay, me. I ran to work <laughs> this morning. That was my one and a half k. I'll mm. tell you, we're late for this radio show. Again. Uh, we've got, yeah, we've <laughs> I've had two hours sleep. Yeah, we're all, all a bit knackered yeah. today. It's been a long day. Anyway, Rob, go on. Yeah, so uh, what, what specifically, what question you want him to... Just general, what your thoughts are? Um, no, nothing new, really, compared to what's what's already been mentioned. Say so something I, different. It, it, I just just sort of feel like if you threaten the boycott, then you can't stop that threat of the boycott once you know things start to turn a corner, like the signings that we made. You can't just say, oh, "Okay, well, well we're not going to boycott anymore." No, you, the way to go is that you threaten a boycott and you see out that boycott until the time is gone. So, like, yeah, you threaten the boycott. And then you take it all the way through to today, to the Arsenal game. So it was, it was I a think tad disappointing. I, it's, a, it's a good it thing was. that he brought that up because I'll bring that up as well. So, some will have threatened the boycott, but and then didn't. but then stopped as soon as you know we got Joel Linton and Sam Maximan through the door. See, the thing that was with us is we tell you straight, we tell you that we're going to go to games, honest, home yeah. and away. You like it or you don't. Simple as that. We got a lot of stick. How we got a lot of praise for it as well, but we'll tell you if we're boycotting or not. And people have doubted us even in tonight's show on the live stream on the radio. You weren't in the boycott. Well, well, you'll say later on that we were. We boycotted the game, and that actually killed. And then if we say in five games time, whatever in October, we'll tell you whether we are or we aren't. There's no sitting on the fence with us, and I think a lot of people have actually respect that from us. Yeah, um, I'd, I completely agree with that. And to be fair, that's one thing we can't say because we got a lot of stick over the summer. Uh, stick and personal attacks. Yeah, yeah, a lot of stick about uh, about this boycott and everything like that. And it's just turned into an abject failure. And even though it's been an abject failure, we we and we as a channel, we involve what one person that obviously went to the game. We can say that we part. Took and can I just say he's not wrong for going to the game? And no, no, he's not wrong, and no, nobody's wrong no. for going to the game. Because hell, I even wanted to go, but I didn't go because I, I believed in the movement that was the bo boycott Arsenal movement. But it's turned out to let us down. But there's no right or wrong answer here. But at the end of the day, for, for all the hype and everything like that, it ended up being terrible. Like, an awful We're getting laughed at. Yeah, exactly. It, it's it's it a, is. It's a it and it's not just our own fans who are laughing that way. It's, Look at my phone today. I had um, 10 messages today from all over. I know. But you got, obviously, I know some of them take the mickey out anyway, so you didn't require that. But you look at, like, um, I mean, I was talking in work earlier on just before the day. It goes, I'm boycotting. Why are you boycotting? I give me reasons. I know I believe in this and all that. Mm. And I'll know that I'll go back because I'm back at work and tomorrow morning and I'll be laughed at. Yeah. Because we're in the small, small minority of a couple of thousand of people, what, 47,000 officially? But at least, at least Lee, we can see. We've done you it. You know what it is? We tried. We tried and we'll try. We'll try something again. Whether that's try something out again. Mainly, if a, another boycott comes up this season, unless something dramatic has happened, I'm not boycotting again. So I'm not with that because no. it needs more. Yeah. Get off Twitter. And mm. perhaps there's other ways as well. Is there ways that we can sort of get to the people at the club more well, directly? Do communicate. That sports so direct if, if, if thing we can't is get rid, Can we? Can we change? Can we change what they're doing? Can we force that sort of thing to make it better? Because if we can't. You know, can't boycott, we can't get rid of him, we can't do this. What can we do? That's false direct stuff was working. Do you know when we're yeah. hammering the Twitter accounts, the hammering the Facebook outside of his house, the outside of his house? Like that. And it's not just that the shareholders inside were worried about their own safety of you know, this company yeah. getting personalized attacks all over. It's not good for business when you say train has 60 quid, bang, and then there's about 80 90 messages in within five minutes, call them it all really? sorts. And you, you can't use social media, but I think just to organize like. Something that needs action, I, I just think. His, it's his personal honest. baby is Sports Direct. You need yeah. to attack, I think we need to attack Sports Direct. Anything that the Magpie Group or Empty Fast you want to come up with, in, they're just a few of the names of the many groups that, that are against Magpie. And that, that is part of the but problem, Carl. There's it? too many. Yeah, there's there's many. And I know they're all doing the good things and they do good, massive things. And there's a couple of our followers as well. They all do their own bits of great stuff, but the problem is there's too many of them. Man. Of course, but if any of them want to, like, Unite and come up with something against Sports Direct, and I, I mean, people might look at it shouting the chops, but it works. It's proved to have worked. Whereas the boycott, 
Wolves last year, abject failure. Today, abject failure. We can say we've done our air boycott Arsenal, but at the end of the day, even even the people said in the meeting we need the with the small amount of people that we have against Mike Ashley that are willing to do something. They've got to make the you've got to you've got to small people for me allowed. You've got to you've got to at least do something, and I think you've also got to praise those small groups as well for at least oh, trying course, something. But, but at least well, that's exactly what I was going to say. Even Chianora, Chianora's getting mentioned in the in yeah. the Facebook uh, we comment others are trying. Some of the other people who were sitting there complaining and saying this, that and the other aren't doing anything. We are trying. We're trying different things. We're trying to negotiate. We're trying to communicate with the club. We're trying... Uh, we've we, boycotted well, we bought, merchandise. We've boycotted uh, food. We've boycotted uh, today. Just little things. D- little things. And we went and, go, we we went and go and get Chi. We'll try and get Chi. Yeah. We've got Rob to do the interview. We've got Chi and Nora. We're trying... I mean, I don't say... And we're not we're not picking ourselves up to see us and all that, but we're no, trying but we're little trying. things. But uh, all these little groups are trying... I think it has to just come into one now. You know what I mean? Stop having these all these groups. Well, and that include uh, ourselves yeah. as well, because we've got a platform where we get a lot of thousands of views. We could they could use us as a platform and go out. A video I is more powerful. Too, really. Video I, I is more powerful. Or even if huge damage. Or, or even the main big and ourselves, but you could use the other other uh, Newcastle related there you go. as well. There's also you, a little thing like you could use the food bank to some extent, make yeah, good exactly. publicity. Against yeah, Ashley, there's yeah, loads of ways it can work. There's loads, True Faith, Gallagher Charts, Mad Pie Channel, us. Use any Jordy. of us, you know, a True Jordy even, if, if you can get in contact with him, great, because he's bigger than all we'll put together. So I would, I would say look, look to them, people like us, so we can try and help this move and carry on, because Twitter, for as much threat as it caused and the amount of hype it built up, it turned into what abject fear. Yeah, it was a chocolate fire guard today. Yeah, yeah. Chocolate fire guard. Was, it, but some it, people are, are saying in the comments there was lots of empty seats on the pictures. I'm telling you, the, from the what we see on the sky, nah, that's the thing. Cool. We only saw some TV in, cameras in, in, in the bar. In the bars next to the ground, we went into the shop. Yeah, club, and they're not exactly. And, full. Uh, we had we had quite a bit of space. We, 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 yeah. we didn't have many problems. I could put my bag with my laptop in on the floor with no problems. I could stand next to it all game. Pe- we've done starship. Yeah, yeah. I could have done starships. For Johnny's in the chat. Johnny's people, in the chat. Probably. People will take. will talk the talk. But very few will walk the walk. Exactly. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, we all get it. It doesn't matter what part of the northeast that you're from. <laughs> uh, we get it. Doesn't matter if you're from an NE postcode or from What's any your other postcode postcodes. there called? DL. It's a DL one. Yes. Yeah. I've got, uh, yeah, 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 but, I've got a know, DL one as well. But any uh, uh, massive. But but we, but we get it. We get it. We feel it. We live it. We breathe it. Like, yeah, um, it. You know what I mean? Um, we, we are we are trying. Are you we sure you got it, Paul? Because uh, some people might say you don't. Some people say that you don't if you don't live in an NE postcode. But I've got news for you. Newcastle's a worldwide brand. So whether you're in NE. DL or China GH or SR or uh, there's a Paraguayan N-N, Northampton fan club. There's a New yeah. York one, yeah. New York fan club. Canadian doesn't matter area. where you are, you get it. There's no ex- mm. exclus- uh, exclusiveness to the NE postcode, and uh, we've uh, we've talked uh, before about it. But um, yeah, we, we've we tried and we can we'll continue to try to sort of force some sort of uh, change in direction from the club. That's what we all want. We just want the best for our club. And, and just to wrap up on the boycott and everything like that, do you, have you got any final words beforehand? If there's anything else you want to say? Uh, I think the, the boycott's over now. It's it's a bit of a yeah, missed opportunity. I, I, I will go on record and say I'm not boycotting again it, unless this. Now, now is the change. time to, to back the team now. Because I think. It, it, it absolutely killed me the day to mm. stand for something which looked like nothing we in, can't, in, in the yeah. grand scheme of things. We so, can't go in like this. Actions uh, are louder than words. Yeah, I'd yeah, say. Uh, Boycott True Sports Direct. Direct. As True Jordy would uh, say, actions speak louder than words. Boycott Sports, Sports Direct. Direct. I'm getting new trainers tomorrow. I can still feel uh, the squelching in my trainers. So where I, do I get them from? Uh, these ones I got from JD, I think. That's how it. And then, so yeah, I'm going back to JD tomorrow. I'm live on here. Oh, oh, oh have, have, friend. haven't been to Sports Direct in a very long time. That, that's the thing. It's just not like that. I mean, it's like uh, back at home. Uh, stepson wanted to go and get some uh, games and get some vouchers and stuff. You're not going to game. Uh, you need some new yeah. trainers for your, for your for your your cadet trip. Pay a pay a little bit more for other more, businesses. Yeah, yeah, to go elsewhere. We'll I also well. and stuff like I, that. I've argued it is personal choices, and these these little things all do add up. And I think they hurt him far more than a couple of thousand not going into the game yeah. today. Yeah. yeah. So to wrap up, I'll just say in future, if there's anything more, 
think we need to do what we did at the start of last season and target sports directly. I think you need to start to make Ashley more than any attempted boycott in future. And that wraps up uh, part three of uh, the Black and White show on Nova Radio North East. And, uh, yeah, Let's we'll talk speak. positively after the break. We'll, we'll talk positively. <laughs> yeah, we'll try. Yeah, we'll try. Right, speak to us in a couple of minutes. And for those who are on the... The Black and White Show on 102.5 of them.
Hearts were going to go back to deadline day where Newcastle Dying brought in ball. two players on deadline day. They brought in uh, Kraft from uh, Indians, the right back, and uh, of course the return of the one, the only Andy Carroll. That Amiens, it sounds like a bottled water company, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it should is. be a football team. It's like mean, aliens? Mm, it doesn't sound right. It's a football team. Yeah, but I'm I mean, that's who we used to play for. Now he plays for at least a, a, a team with a much better name. Definitely. Let's be honest. I don't know if the quality of football is any better, but that's by the by. But on Andy Carroll, the return of uh, the Geordie, I think I seen in the comments earlier on, any 8 I mean, I, I tell about the long staffs being any 29 like Bencham. Bencham area? Uh, I think so. That so, way? NAA, Andy Carroll. So, uh, we'll Lowfeld. Bencham Lowfeld. St. Joseph's we, we need someone local to the yeah. NAA area to join the channel now. Cal, you do a good job at presenting the postcode lottery. <laughs> you, you, you love postcodes. I, I love Hey, I play the postcode lottery. I've uh, won three times at 10 inch time. My street won, <laughs> if my street won that, honestly, there'll be no one. I'm still waiting for that 25 grand to come through. Yeah. If, if I was in that, every street around us, bar the street I live on, We'd probably win it. <laughs> Literally, the one out the back, one out the front, one out the side, and our street would just be left out. So, but, uh, moving on from uh, the postcode lottery, I don't know how we ended up on that. But um, Andy <laughs> Carroll, in, he's already played 80 games for Newcastle and scoring 31 goals. He left the club in 2011 for what was at the time an English record fee of £35 million. So he comes back with loads of injuries to his name, um, maybe a little doubt over him coming back by some fans, but. Uh, I'll open the chat up everybody. What does people think about um, about Andy Carroll coming home? Love it. Absolutely love it. It was it was yeah. always gonna happen. Um, was it? Abs- yeah. Oh, I yeah, I was so. oh yeah, I think we had faith. I know we get linked with him every single transfer window that has happened since. And it's finally happened. And you know, he's coming home and uh, if you tuned into our radio show, um, like on the actual radio then there's a, a treat for you uh, at the next ad break Re- regarding Andy Carroll. I've, right, I've dropped yeah. a hint at what song's coming going to come on. But the YouTube stream will not n- not know this. Sadly so, uh, not, no. I'm going to go on. Uh, on deadline day, uh, Johnny, who's not with us um, at the moment, he's, uh, he's away. Yeah, he's in the chat, actually, Johnny. He interviewed a couple of fans with Lee on deadline day about Andy Carroll, so uh, I'm going to put you through to the audio clips that have been recorded by us at Newcastle Fans TV. For them, so uh, yeah, play them off. It's been it's it's been decent, I would say. I mean, we've got uh, that craft now over the line, and um, Andy Carroll making his uh, return back to St James's Park. And um, I was thinking, oh no, at first because of his injury record. But if the lad can stay fit, I'm, I'm willing to give him a chance. I don't I don't think he'll start, but I feel like if Joe Linton's not having a good game or Joe Linton's feeling a bit tired, then. He's the one you can bring on. Not going to be a starter, at least. He might be starters in like cup games, maybe League Cup, FA Cup games, but a one definitely to bring off the bench, I would say. And Murphy, I think that will do him good. He is a talent and still a talented young lad, uh, in my opinion. And I think this loan move will actually do him well, in my opinion, to get him uh, just a bit more of that experience. I do feel a little bit sorry for the lad. Why? As I don't think he's been given a big, massive chance yet at this football club here, in my opinion. Quite pleased, actually. Um, I thought he was great when he was um, first first at Newcastle. Um, he's an impact player now. Uh, you know, he's a handful. So I think it's it's promising. I can't see him starting many games. He carries a lot of injuries, but um, you, you know, he can cause defenders a lot of a lot of grief. I'm looking forward to see Joe Linton. I think seeing Maximin will be a decent one. You could tell with his back pass in the friendly game against uh, St. Edian. That is the two I'm really looking forward to. Well, you've, you've got with, with his track record, you've got to worry. But uh, I think he averages about 15, 20 anyway. And even if he comes off the bench, um, as I say, he's a good impact player. He can cause a bit of disruption. He can get many goals. Yeah, I mean, he's good in the air. He's Good, good finisher. Yeah, why not? I mean, one thing you can take from it is, you know, that he's he's from Newcastle. He'll, he'll give his all. Excellent deal. Great deal for Newcastle. Good gates, of lad. Bit of passion. Bit of fire in his belly. Is he? A, I don't know. Maybe not a last a last chance saloon signing, but is he something that no, someone that knows what it means to play for Newcastle? Well, definitely, he's got that passion for Newcastle. He's from Gateshead. Okay, it mightn't be the best deal we ever wanted, but um, Joe Linton's not the real deal yet. 
He's a good he's a good Premier League striker. In his first game here in the Premier League against Aston Villa, he scored a hat trick here right. in Newcastle. It was top class and he just frightens defenders. And Newcastle haven't had players that frighten defenders for a long, long time. I don't think any manager in Newcastle is gonna have full say. You know, if you get if you get five sig uh, signatures and you get the say on two of them, three of them, you haven't done too bad. No. How would you rate this transfer window out of 10? You've got to put, obviously, Joe Linton's come in, Carroll's has come in now, we've obviously just got a new right back as well. Is it the, the minimum required that Mike Ashley and Lee Charney have done this uh, summer window? We needed players to fill the squad because he'd lost Rondon, Perez, Diame. He needed players. Another midfielder might have just sealed the deal. Danny Drinkwater would have been ideal, but look, you've got five players in. Kind of be too bad. They're all unproven. All the players that we've signed at the end of the day, um, they've still got to prove themselves in the Premier League. It was important that we strengthened because if it went into the season with the squad that we had, which left the season, it would have been a bit of a struggle. Especially if Rondon and Perez had left and they weren't replaced. I think we should have done some deals a lot earlier. You know, Rafa Benitez leaving the football club, having it get announced sort of months later. Bruce coming in very late. You know, we're, you could say we could have done better. In, in many ways in terms of bringing players in and getting players out. Benitez was sort of disputing the transfer budget with Mike Ashley and how he runs you know, his business in terms of buying players. Obviously Rafa Benitez wanted what he wanted and Ashley wasn't sort of happy about it. Bruce is obviously, I would say, a yes man to Mike Ashley, regardless of what anybody says. And I think Bruce will obviously go with the policy of what Mike Ashley wants at the football club, which is obviously to buy younger players in discard Andy Carroll and to obviously sell him on for more later down the line. Uh, there's always room for improvement but I have to say St Maximin is definitely the one I'm looking forward to. Uh, the pace, he, he scares the living hell out of your defenders and I think he's got that bit of skill which we missed uh, last season so that's the one I'm looking forward to most. And that was the first time he's not done a pun all show. So, uh, <laughs> Rob's done. Oh come on! Well, I mean, um, going, <laughs> going back on Andy Carroll, though, I'm, um, I'm actually really happy with the sign. I was buzzing when he was annou uh, announced. The club did actually a really nice video for him when he first came on. Um, when he first came on for Newcastle, wearing the gold Northern Rock top, I bought that at home. I mean, how they keep them letters in good nick, I'd love to know because I'm on my third Northern Rock top now with them letters. Because uh, you put them in the wash and the letters just fall away. Any, any wash it with a bag inside uh, a bag. Inside a bag. Yeah, right. that's a tip. Same to trainers. If you ever need the trainers washed, like I will after the day. Right. But back on Andy Carroll. Full, full, of, full um, of tips. Um, yeah, we're full of tips tonight. You're not just a football show. Uh, not just pretty faces on a, on a show. I wouldn't call with pretty mind. Well, I would. But uh, oh, that's, that, that's just that's just me. But, yeah. <laughs> Get ready for the comments. <laughs> <laughs> we'll not let the comments decide. In fact, we'll t we'll mute the chat just for the, for the next <laughs> couple of seconds. But uh, yeah, I'm really happy with the Andy Carroll signing and with how set the sentimental the teams I am with the long staffs to see another local lad and the team to join Paul Dummett and obviously the long staffs is a is a great thing to see. To be honest, I, I, lo I love local lads in the team because they give a strong backbone and. I don't they know, I don't it, know don't if it's just me, but when a local lad scores, it's like it feels a lot. If you feel for it a it's lot extra more, extra special, isn't it? When you're out, you know, uh, one of your own is living your dream, kind of thing. Mm. So, it's it's nice to see Andy Carroll back. But I know Lee won't be linked with him in every transfer window. every transfer window because everyone thought he was going to get the number like Bass Toast, isn't it? Uh, mm -hmm. every, every, like everyone thought he was going to get the number forty nine shirt, and that was probably to commemorate the amount of times we were linked with him after he went to <laughs> Liverpool. So, but no, he's been given the number seven shirt, which is a bit of a surprise. I didn't expect him to get that shirt, but uh, I think I would, you would have been given the nine if Joe Linton didn't take it. But one thing you oh, have been doing is yeah. probably a bit of a critic when it came to Carroll because you, you're very concerned about his injuries, aren't you? Have you? I think everyone's got to be right to have a bit of a, a concern. Um, look, if you give me a Charlie Austin or Andy Carroll, I'll probably pick Charlie Austin because you'll play more is, games. You say that, Lee, but um. Charlie Austin played, played 15, 16 games last year and scored one goal. Andy Carroll. I know, but a lot simple. of them because he fell out with the manager, though. It wasn't good of injury. Yeah, but. And then, to be fair, advice. he had a legitimate cool choked off. Remember, remember mm. kicking off a match of the day? Yeah, yeah, with with the, with and, then, <laughs> and then someone did that remix of like putting Park Life over the top uh, of yeah. his. Uh, that was, that was his bang out of order! Bang out of order! And all of that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, so. But then it's one, it's one of them. Would you rather. 
Look, I think if he can, if he makes twenty games, I think that's a success. Home, home and league in a way, whatever. If he plays twenty games this season, that's a massive success. Because if he plays twenty games, he'll probably win you six or nine points defensively, but yeah. more importantly, offensively. Fair. He looks in good shape as well. He looks in good nick. Uh, he just says he, he needs the the match sharpness back. So I, I still think he's nervous on games. camera speaking though because he gives very short answers, doesn't he? Yeah. I think he's buzzing. Don't get me wrong. Be back. Be there that <laughs> yeah. I think he's uh, buzzing to be back, though. Of course, he'll be buzzing to be back. I mean, I'm, I'm happy to see him back as well. But uh, now I'm going to show an audio clip of um, what he said in his interview when he signed for the team on the Euro. Yeah, feels good. You know, um, feels very good. My friends, family are here. To it's a club that I support, so it's, it is home. Yeah, well, it was a bit of a mad one because we kept it quiet for a while and um, halfway up through through the journey, I got my phone was just non-stop, you know, and someone had put something to the press and my head was all over the place. I couldn't believe it was real. I think it was the first hour in. I was thinking, oh, yeah, I am. My bags are packed. I'm ready to go. Yeah, just driving in, w- driving on the pitch there and, and walking down, it just feels amazing. Just feels just feels normal to be honest. Like I say, walking walking back down the side of that pitch, it just it just feels pretty normal. Feels like I've done it in my sleep constantly, you know, it's a, it's an amazing feeling. Yeah, I mean the last couple of years it's been really tough, you know. I've had um a single injury that's just niggling away and I'm hoping to get over that and I'm feeling good now outside running and like I say I just I wanna get clear mind, fresh start and I mean what better place can it be than here? Yeah, I've been working really hard. I mean, uh, I've still been in every day over the summers. No, no holiday, no nothing. I've been in at West Ham training every day with the physios and uh, still being about the lads. So I've, I've been working hard and sticking to schedules. And and now I'm here. I know it's, I know it's home. I've, I've played here. I've, I've spoke to the fans. I am a fan. Um, my family's here. I mean, uh, for me to, to get back to where I was, I think this is the only place for me. Mentally, you know, I've been. Um, I was young when I left here. I was, I was. Um, it was hard, you know, coming fr- through the ranks and then bang on a scene and then bang to Liverpool and and um, I had to mature. And now I've got four kids and um, settled down. I feel good about being back home. Spoke to Lee and, and and got involved and and then the last couple of weeks it's just it's been slow burner. And then uh, I done a medical the other day and and that was it really with them coming in and getting a. Get a Geordie manager. I think it's a fantastic thing, you know. I think the, it's something that the, the club need. I think he's a great, a great sign, a great manager, and um, we've now got a couple of Geordies in the squad. It's always nice to have homegrown players, and, and and now we've got a manager as well along with it. So it helps a lot. And I mean, all of us know what it means to play play for Newcastle, and um, the manager obviously knows what it's like to be a, a manager at the club that he's grown up supporting as well. Well, do you know, it's a shame my mum and dad are on holiday at the minute, so it's, it's a bit of a nightmare. I've come up and, to see them, and I've just dropped off all my stuff at their house when they're not there, and, and um, it's a bit of a shame. But, yeah, now they're all happy. They can't, can't wait to see me. I'm going to see my brother tonight, so uh, everyone's happy. Yeah, I'm not going to be uh, rushing to get back. I don't want any, um, anything to go wrong, you know, so I'm going to take it easy and stick to what the surgeon's um, said and, and go along with his recommendations. Yeah, I'm pretty good. I've been outside running. I've been um, doing some finishing sessions and uh, and uh, like I say, I just got to stick to the timeline and and get back when I'm back. I know, I know personally when you live away from the area for a little while and come back. And speaking from past experience, cough, yeah, cough, cough, cough. <laughs> your accent does go a bit. But uh, the, he wasn't the only signing on deadline day. We also signed Kraft from uh, Aliens or Aliens or whatever Lee said earlier on. But uh, I've got some stats about him. Actually, Rob's usually the stat man at this channel, but uh, <laughs> I'm giving him a run for his money today. Per game, for what money? Like, I'm not getting paid for this. No, I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm not either. I mean, we're both students, Rob. We both need money at this point. But, um, <laughs> He per Any game sponsors last out season. there? He stats per game last season goes as follows. He had zero point key passes per game, four big chances created per game, um, zero point two successful dribbles per game. I mean that's a bit of a worry, I know, but uh, one successful tackle per game and two point three clearances per game. So he's quite active in a game, isn't he? He's not. He's not one to be very quiet. Sounds more defensive. I've done a video on this. Didn't oh yeah, 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 you've got the heat map. 
which yeah. uh, you had on a previous video where it's, uh, he doesn't pass the halfway line. I know there's a lot of YouTube videos, and it should never be a YouTube scout which sees him in the final third, mm -hmm. but he's not. He's predominantly a full back, which means it means the old school flat back four doesn't attack too much. He's the defender first and foremost. Yeah. And then he'll attack, so yeah. Do a PSS. I think it'll be a good option to put in, defen in defence, especially if we need a point or just trying to shut up shop or stop a winger. Yeah. Coming down that side, so yeah, I mean, it'll be good because be the amount of times Yedlin's targeted, yeah, oh my word, that'll yeah. help having Craft there a little bit more of a specialist who can be defensive. Yeah, so. it gives it gives a different type of option. But even when you think of anybody who's when you, even when you think of anybody Swedish, you never think of flair, you never think of skill. You always think hard work and grafty type players. Yeah, who'll put a shift Unless in. You think of, uh, Larson. Unless you think of Larson or... Well, I thought you were going to say the ladies Lewis. or something there, Kyle. You I was know. just waiting for you just to say that. I mean, no, uh, Lee, I'm not serious here, but, you know... It's CD? Just, it's just one, of, it's just one of them. But uh, we'll move on. <laughs> La Scot Swedish ladies are beautiful, I must we'll, say that. We'll need, uh, we're gonna... I will get told off for saying that, but I will go on record and say that. Well, that that's fine. I mean, Nothing wrong with Swedish there's, ladies. There's a certain chant I remember from the 2006 World Cup that was sang to them. So, uh, yeah, yeah, yes. what that's, not, that's not, that's uh, not, but let's go on to, I'm happily married, thank you, <laughs> let's go on, um, Kerry is listening, let's go on to uh, Isaac Hayden, who's, uh, apart according to Steve Bruce is in talks with, um, with Newcastle about a new contract, and he's been saying, it, he's been interviewed by the club actually, saying that he's, that there's reasons for him staying, his uh, fiance is more happy with him staying up here now, because she sees that he's got a, an amazing opportunity, praises the fans, and, since the turn of January, and bar the first part of last season where he had a bit of a whirlwind with in his personal life as well as wanting to leave the club, um, I think I think the turnaround he's had has been absolutely phenomenal, and I hope he does sign a new contract because, especially with the way he played, um, the way he played today, that I want to see more from, and I think he suits Steve Bruce's system more than most because he's very accustomed to that with playing in the playing in the Championship under Bruce at uh, Bull City, so. Hopefully, that's it's the same things to come. What do you think? Would you say to see Hayden sign a long term contract? Yeah, think, de definitely. Yeah, yeah. It was it was like seeing that like a big poster saying future events, sign of things to come. Right, and on that note, we'll, this, mate. we've touched on part four. We're gonna go to a break now. After Rob's pun, I need a couple of minutes and I need a glass of water. So, uh, yeah, in part in the last part of the show, we'll uh, speak about how Newcastle fare in the Premier League this season. And of course, we're going to have a little preview for Norwich as well. So yeah, speak is enough for you.
Back to the joy of many Newcastle fans. Kyle, over to you uh, for the start uh, of this last segment of the Rob, show. I think that uh, I think that song was um, about eight years too late. So I, I jumped the gun a bit. So yeah, we're on the final part of tonight's show, which will be going through oh, how we think Newcastle will do this season. Maybe a couple of predictions from us, and uh, if we've got ten, we'll go through uh, the Norwich game as well. Who we think should play, like uh, kind of a predicted eleven type thing. But uh, yeah, welcome back to the Black and White Show on the Nova, on Nova Radio North East one hundred two point five, as well as streamed live on the internet as well on social media platforms. So uh, yeah, I'm your host Kyle Thompson. I'm joined by Lee Lawler, the man himself, Rob Spiral, <laughs> and of course Paul Rudder. So uh, yeah, lads, we're into the final part of the show. How do you think Newcastle are going to do this season? Are you encouraged by today's performance against Arsenal? Where do you think was we're going to be? I think there's lots of positives to take. Um, you know, a bar one mistake, we would have got a point. I think uh, the likes of Joe Linton uh, played really, really well. Hayden played really well. I think our defence on on the whole was really good. So there's positives to take there. We're defensively solid. Yeah. Uh, we've got exciting players going forward, and I can't wait to see us against a team who will probably slightly more matched to in Norwich. Yeah, a, a slightly matched team. I can see. I can see where Tottenham players have causing real problems. Cool, great. Um, I, mean. I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to talk Newcastle up too much. But it, if you're in the comments on my YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and everything like that, get get your predictions in. Where do you think we're going to finish? I've seen one from David N U F C. He thinks we're going to finish 16th, uh, which isn't relegation. So I suppose that would be that be mm. achieving target if you might actually. Um, but I, I personally think we've got a solid defence there, as Paul mentioned. Um, all used to playing each other with each other from last season and seasons gone by. Got a solid goalkeeper there into Bravka. I think we've got a really good good potential in the midfield with the Longstaff brothers. Uh, John Joe Shelby, I think he's got a big season to come as well because it's heavily relied on him to pass. Uh, Hayden staying, that's a, that's a good thing as well. Uh, going forward, we've got Maximin, we've got Almiron, we've got Jolinton, we've got even Muto on the bench, Gale. We've got a lot of options up front and I think I think we can cause problems and I think we can push towards our 10th place because I think the top nine are really... Um, but, well, the, the exciting thing for me, take away today's result, I still think we'll finish somewhere between 12th and 14th. Mm. But for the first time in a long time, I think we should be tagged in at least the League Cup mm. to go on a, on a cup run. We've got a squad... We should be able to be able to it's use there, that and flex it, the muscle the, a bit. The tools are, are definitely down to um, Steve Bruce. For yeah, sure. and obviously the look of the draw, we're going to pull Sheffield Wednesday, do we all know that? Um, <laughs> and that'll be a For me, there's three key players you have you know. to keep fit all season. Joe Linton for your goals. You need Almiron now stepping up. And Fabian Shea needs to have another season like he did last year. For me, though, they're, they're the main three. So you can talk about your long staff doing well, but for me, if you had to pinpoint your three key players, I'd be them three for me. I mean, I'd, I'd probably say the sales to Bravka and a couple of others as well. Because one thing you can say about us, and not many have this, is we've got a good core of players there. We've got the sales Shaw at the back, to Bravka in goal. Uh, for the first time in a couple of years, we've actually got options at right back. Paul Dummett's there as well. Shelby in the midfield has been there a couple of years. Back. Jonathan in the back. chat. There's, there's, honestly, there's a good couple of options, and it really depends on how it's managed. If Steve Bruce can get the best out of this team, it's more than capable of finishing in the top half, but if he doesn't get the best out of it, which is what a lot of people think, is that he won't. Even some comments saying he'll be gone by Christmas and that we might finish 17th with their beer sound charge, which is it's quite a bold call by um, Matt and Hater. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, I think we should strive to be a little bit better than that because I think we're a bit stronger than a couple of teams down the bottom. But I'd like to say, I, I, personally, I think maybe top... Top half to 12th, 13th, 14th in a good cup run. And given the summer, given the roller coaster that we've already been through, despite it being the opening day for us, I'd t- I think maybe top 12 in a good cup run, I would be chucked a bit with. I yeah. don't know about you as well. But... Oh, like a, like a, someone who uh, saw a steam train coming and he was chucked That's a bit. Funny. We're in double figures now, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, Some of them I'm not even I, noticing I think, now. I think I've just... I, I've, I, Jason English put R- Rob's life plans include making... a. Uh, um, I can't pronounce that prodigious word, uh, amount of rank football puns. It's fair to say he's achieved these goals. Well, Jason English, I shall, I'm inclined to agree. Uh, that Rob Life goals that I'm yet to score. 
<laughs> I think if you finish, I think if you stay in the Premier League, it's a, it's a success. Sorry, but I know that's negative, but um, mm. I think just staying it, it, it is a bit negative because um, I, as Kenny I think Wilshire said in the chat, it needs to gel yet. Yeah. And honestly, when you've got St. Maximin, Almiron, Jordan, and Fire and all cylinders, all they're going to terrify teams. They really are. They've got so much potential there. And um, it's, believe it or not, the most expensive front frame in history by some distance question, as well. Yeah, question is, will people at the club have the patience for them to... Because it will take time for them to gel. I've and once, once, once it happens, patience, they will be coaches. But will you know football? It, it, it's a very impatient game, if you like. Well, you look at like of Torban and stuff like that. They have come in and Cabela. People have jumped on the back straight away. You you can't. They're coming from mm. a, a, a different country, a different culture. Um, I think probably Talvin is probably a one-off. Yeah. Like five months, then he shipped it out. Then he comes a world beater. Yeah, but mm. like so, you, you've got to you've got to give these players some of these players like a uh, time. Yeah, I mean I'll, I'll make criticise the likes of Joslo and stuff like that when he was playing at the club. But well, you give them, you give them that, <laughs> you give them that support and, and time at first, and it's, you you can't just judge them on like a couple of appearances. People, some people are jumping on, oh, I'll meet you on already. It's the first game of the season. We well, played really well at the end of last season. So at the end of the day, you know, and if you've seen the Copa America, you've got to give the lad, give the lad a break. Everybody can have a bad one game or so, and I don't think it was overly terrible. We had a lot worse. I've lived through Andreas Anderson. You could go on. Mm. Once you've lived through Luke some of them players. Same De Jong. Yeah. I think for me so come on. The player is everyone can see at home for me is Saint Maximum. He's the one I'm looking forward to the most. He's yeah. the one that I'm not pinning the hopes on him, but he's the one where, you know, yes you can bring off Carol, which will automatically lift the crowd up, but he's the one that can we're one nil down. He can make things happen. Yes, he's like, oh yeah. yes, he's coming on. It's one of them. Oh, this is brilliant. This kind of weird. Like Man City. And I hope he starts a few as well. I want him to start next week against Norwich, and I know we're going to touch on the uh, preview of Norwich in a minute or so. But um, predictions, lads. Where do you think we're going to finish? Fifteenth. I've said fifteenth for a while. I've said twelfth for a while, so I want to stick with twelfth. I'm going to say twelfth in a good cup run. Yeah. Hopefully, that's me being very that's very. Just optimistic. past the second round of the League Cup is a good cup run. And. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get that on Barrows to Sheffield Wednesday. For the last five, six minutes, um, I, I want to touch on the Norwich game. Like, judging off today, is there any people, first and foremost, that you think should be dropped for Norwich next week? I don't think it's near when that played massively negative. I think Shelby mm-hmm. Longstaff were disappointing, but I'm expecting them to start. Um, yeah, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah, I Almiron was changes. bright first half, but is he really going to take him out the final line and bring. Uh, you only really look at the bench and because Gale and Carroll are still not fully there. See, maximum. Gale was suspended as well today from the yeah. card he had off last season. So it's got both, any so uh, the defence will be the same unless Kraft gets a look in. I can't see that changing. So I think it'll be interesting. I think there'll be um, plenty of goals in it because if Norwich attack were, and um, we've got that pace now. It's a bit more promising than last season. It is a fixture that over the past two seasons that. Uh, ourselves, ourselves and Norwich have been in the same division the past two seasons. It has been a fixture that's guaranteed goals. There's been at least four goals in each game. In there. Well, yeah. remember the six-two. Uh, the six-two yeah, includes Even the six-two. Yeah. It, it, it was that mm. bad under McLaren at the time. I remember it was six-two up with ten minutes to go, and I honestly thought with, with defence being that bad with Colachini and Stephen Taylor, yes. I thought we were going to chuck it up. Here. I really did. I thought we were that. I thought with defence was that shaky that year. But but now we've got a decent defence and they've got Grant Hamley. That should give you the, all the optimism that you need. The two Aarons as well. I know one uh, Rolando kind of player, but that'd be interesting for Ma- the family back at home. Mm. But I, uh, not looking forward gave, to the drive. a good or... account of himself on Friday night, I thought. Um, Aarons' cousin. Yeah. Who's also called Aarons, of course. Yeah, Max Aarons. I, I really rate him. He looked really good against Liverpool Friday night, to be fair. And the, oh, of course, it can co- cover all that on our channel. Mm-hmm. So we'll have all that as well for you. We will so be there, won't we? Is, well, it, I won't, is, is, is there anyone that you'd see want to see start next Saturday? For me, I think Maxim's got I think start. I don't think he will, but I think it'll be great to see him. But I think, again, off the bench, if there is a 0-0 or a 1-1-er, and I thought the thing kind of is, lift is, it. The way that the, this Norwich team attacks, uh, I can't see it being a, a 0-0 goal. Oh, it won't minutes. be. Nothing I think, 0-0. I think there'll be three or four goals by then. I really think it's going to be like a first on match of the day type of game. It's going to be back and forth. There's Let's going to be, be having balls. you. Mm-hmm. Where and, uh, are you? Jonathan, if you want to give your ticket up, mate, uh, if you're listening, I'll happily take your place. But um, 
No, no, Next seriously. I, 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 would, I, I, I would I would subtly <laughs> is that what you're cutting him play? Yeah, it is. Yeah. I don't know. I, I right. don't know who you drop for him. I don't know if you drop Al Almiron or if you drop um, mm. even one of the midfielders. Then put Almiron in midfield. I kind of say it can't change too much. Yeah. I, think, I think he might stick. He might, I think he might stick. Yeah, one, one, one maximum. maybe the bench might change one place. We could do it for central midfielder on the bench. Uh, Matty Longstaff. Would be nice. I would yeah, have, have, have a midfield on the bench today. So, oh, John, a Jonathan's not letting you take a goal. Oh, yeah, I've seen Jonathan's not letting us off the ticket. Oh, wait. Yeah, it's worth a try, I guess. Should I towards, now? To, <laughs> towards the end of the show. But uh, yeah, I'd, I'd start Maxman. I think he'd, he's enough to excite any team. What, as, uh, as a striker behind the I'd 10? Have him just behind the striker. I'd have him just behind Jones. But you just give him a free roll. There you go. Fl fly, yeah, left, right, I whatever. I think he's got the work rate to help out the midfield as, as well. So I'd be really happy with that. But uh, that wraps everything up. A um, small preview for Norwich. We went through um, the game against Arsenal the other day. Uh, going down swinging, I think. I think we played all right. Went, went guess, down guess prediction <laughs> swinging. We're not swinging as Lee. Um, <laughs> <laughs> predictions for Saturday. What's going on the mind? We talked about. Um, we we'll talked about the boycott in depth, about how much of an abject failure it was. We we'll talked about the the transfer dealings on deadline day, which we're happy with Andy Carroll and of course Air Craft, and as well the small preview for Norwich. So that wraps up everything. Yeah, really. check, check out the videos there, Ron and you guys. Yeah, yeah loads of videos. Yeah. So, um, Arsenal fan comments, TV crew, thanks for listening. And everything. We've got uh, well, radio. well, we've got a minute left. So we've got so a big don. Predictions, predictions. Your, Fifteen seconds each. For what? The Saturday. No, I, don't, game, yeah. I don't predict results, Rob. Ah, you know that. I'm, so I'm, I'm not a one for that. So, Paul, now we have 25 seconds. <laughs> yeah, 3 1. 3 go, it's 3 1 to who? 3 1 to Newcastle. I yeah. see what he did there. He's trying to drag it out. And, so, uh, what I'll do, Rob, is I'll talk really slow. Yeah, oh. time for more jokes. No, well, that's no, not. No, 10 that's if I can think of so. no. let, me, um, let me wrap up here since it's uh, my show. Oh, it's his oh, show oh, now. No one else is it. No. You know, there's, just, there's just Rob on the controls. There's just <laughs> Lee on the stream. Paul's looking pretty as as ever. You know? <laughs> but uh, yeah, I hope everyone uh, everyone listening on the radio and the uh, stream all had a good time listening to a good couple of hours. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you in a bit. We will be back same time next week. So stay tuned. Keep it too. Bye.